What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with some breaking news regarding The Division 2. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what you think in the comments section below. But all of this news and more is on my Twitter page, X if you're nasty. So follow me over here at Kamikaze Von Doom for all of The Division news before I make a YouTube video. But this was just released from the developers as they stated during our live stream. And here are our patch notes. Now I do have a full recap of today's live stream going up shortly after this video, but the patch notes came out very quick. So I figured I'd go over these and give you the information as soon as it comes out. Now the developers say, to release the new Year 5 Season 3 Vanguard and Project Resolve, we'll be taking down the Division 2 servers for a scheduled maintenance tomorrow. Tuesday, February 6th from 03.30 a.m. Eastern to 06.30 a.m. Eastern. And then it says to see what's coming, click on here. So we have our new patch notes. And here we go. Now, if you didn't know, Agent Kelso is going to be our main person for today or for this season's uh, manhunt. Now that was uh, revealed earlier today during that live stream. And we'll talk about that more during the uh, full recap. But here are the patch notes. Now it says Year 5 Season 3 Vanguard, February 5th, 29 minute read. And here's your new image of Kelso. And let's see if we can uh, clear this up a little bit. There we go. Now it says, Year 5 Season 3, Vanguard takes Division agents back to the streets of New York to investigate the disappearance of Agent Kelso. In addition to the new gear and continuation of the story, players will get their hands on the new health updates and everything coming with Project Resolve. So that's going to be fun. Now they give us a little uh, table of contents here. Here's another image of Kelso. They completely changed her outfit. What do you guys think? Um, she definitely has more. And then you can see all the red right here, the glow. I don't know. I'm getting some evil vibes. Now it says, after Division agents resecured stability in the White House, Agent Kelso returned to New York to ensure that the Haven settlement was also secure. But while agents were rescuing the civilians abducted by the Black Tusk, Kelso has gone missing. Meanwhile, the Division now faces harsh reality that hunters are among them raising doubt and suspicion in both the White House and Castle settlements. Agents must now find Kelso, but as they retrace her steps, more truths will be uncovered, reopening some old wounds. Now, a lot of people are suspecting that this uh, has something to do with uh, Keener. So, Aaron Keener and Warlords of New York, that was the last, like, big time we were with Kelso. I mean, she did help us in uh, the White House with uh, Schaefer, and she was there with, uh, you know, the end of the whole power plant and uh, General Anderson manhunt. Um, but it is, uh, interesting what we're going to do with Kelso and they keep mentioning hunters. This is really cool. They mention hunters in the trailer and they're mentioning hunters here in the patch notes. Very cool. Now we have a new season calendar right here. So if you want to screenshot this, here is your new calendar for, uh, this season that is starting tomorrow. So we will have the Civic Center that we have to investigate. That will be the first part, February 6th. Followed by the new apparel event, Veiled Tactics. They showed us a little trailer on that as well. After that, the next uh, manhunt uh, location for us to investigate will be Two Bridges. Followed by Financial District, the rerun apparel event of Last Resort. And then finally, Battery Park, we will investigate. And then, I guess, after we investigate all four areas, we will find out what's up with Agent Kelso. Now, it says, Gear, Weapon, and Talents. Uh, get ready to gear up and arm yourself with new weapons and gear 
in year five, season three. This features two new named weapons, two new named gear pieces, a bunch of new talents, plus a gear set and brand set. Exotic wise, you've got a new exotic gear piece and two exotic weapons, one of them exclusive to the Descent game mode. Now, first up, we have the Mosquito. Now, this is the new exotic pistol. Here's an image of it right here. Now, uh, it comes with the talent Mosquito Song. Now, it says hitting an enemy will apply a stack. Stacks will be shared uh, between players, so multiple people can use this weapon at once. It says at 10 stacks, the enemy will forcefully target the last player that applied a stack. The stack will uh, deplete every five seconds, and activating the effect on the enemy will remove all stacks from other enemies. It says that uh, the weapon will come with uh, 15 reload speed for the magazine mod, and 15 accuracy for the muzzle mod. And it says it has no functionality in PvP. No functionality in PvP. Next up, we have the new exotic gear. These are the new gloves. Here's an image of the new exotic gloves. These are the rugged gauntlets or the rugged gauntlets. And they come with the new talent, Iron Grip. So the new talent, Iron Grip, will uh, take away this uh, recoil penalty that you get for hip firing. And it will also take away a hip, uh, a blind firing uh, penalty for the recoil as well. So they said it will uh, increase your accuracy and stability for hip fire and blind fire. That's basically what it's doing. Moving on to the new gear. This is your new gear set that comes out tomorrow. This does come out tomorrow. Now it says it has no functionality in PvP. All right? So I hope you are all reading this, okay? No functionality in PvP. So that goes for the new exotic um, pistol and the new gear set. You cannot use it in PvP. Now, as far as the set bonuses we can use, it says uh, the two-piece will give you 70% health, the three-piece will give you 15% total armor, and then the four-piece will unlock a new unique talent called Stoic. Now it says Stoic, you will get 3% damage resistance for every enemy that is targeting you. The bonus is multiplied by X, one point X, where X is the number of agents in your group. Now it says the uh, chess piece uh, talent will be called Deceit, where enemies that target your decoy, it will also help out with your Stoic damage bo uh, resistance bonus. And finally, the backpack bonus uh, will give you 4% damage resistance bonus instead of 3. So you could be a really tanky SOB. So you're basically set to use this new gear set with that new exotic pistol. And you could be a tanky decoy for all the enemies while your teammates just kill them. I mean, that, that's pretty much what this is. Pretty cool. Now here is the new brand set. I, I really enjoyed this new brand set during the uh, testing PTS. Now the new brand set is called Palisade Steelworks. The one piece will give you 10% armor on kill. The two piece will give you health of 60%. And the three piece one plus skill tier. Now as far as the bonuses for the new named items, you will get a new named chess piece called the Combustor. And this will give you perfectly explosive delivery. Now, whenever you throw a skill, 1.5 seconds after it landing, it will create an explosion. And that will damage enemies within 5 meters. And that will happen every 5 seconds. Now, I showed this using like a decoy during the PTS. And it was doing like 2 million damage every 5 seconds. It was pretty, pretty cool. Now, it shows right here that the damage will scale with your skill tiers dealing up to 100% of the damage of a concussion grenade. Pretty cool. Now it says that this will apply to remote pulse, all turrets, all hives, explosive seeker, cluster seeker, mender seeker, decoy, and all traps. That's amazing. Now as far as the new named backpack, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you, this is the uh, new 
gear set, the Aegis gear set. Now, that's how the developers are pronouncing it, Aegis. Now, I did hear some military people say it's Aegis, but uh, the developers, and I'll copy what the developers are doing, and I'll say Aegis. So the new Aegis gear set, this is what it looks like. Now, it has the LMB logos on it and the cool color scheme. I love it. Now, going back to the new named backpack, this is for the Palisade Steelworks brand set. The new backpack will be called Proxy. Now, Proxy will give you the new talent perfectly tamper-proof. So enemies that walk within three meters of your hive turret, remote, remote pulse, or decoy will be shocked. So testing these together, you could shock enemies and explode them just from using your skills and then being near it. It's pretty wicked. I like it. Now, as far as the new named weapons and talents, we have the Brutus. This is the new named M700 Carbon, and it gives us the talent perfectly behind you. So this will amplify your weapon damage by 20% to enemies that are not targeting you. We will also get the new named M16A2 called the Whisper, and this will also give you that perfectly behind you, amplifying weapon damage by 20%. Now, the normal behind you talent will amplify your damage by 15% and has no functionality in PvP. No functionality in PvP. Mm. So you can't even use the new talent in PvP either. So the new gear set, the new named weapon talents... And the new exotic pistol, none of which can be used in PvP. These are all specifically for PvE. Now moving on to Descent. Descent will have a new exotic rifle exclusive to the NSA store. And here's a photo of the new exclusive exotic rifle called the Vindicator. So this Vindicator exotic rifle will come with the talent Ortiz Assault Interface. So while you are scoped in, the weapon will highlight a random body section of that enemy, and the weapon will deal 40% weapon damage to that highlighted body section. And then these are the uh, mods that come with that exotic. Moving on, we have Project Resolve. So this is all of the final changes that will be happening tomorrow. These are the final changes, the final draft. So starting tomorrow, balancing changes to conflict. The new conflict cache. They have extended the loot pool of the conflict cache, and it will now drop items of legendary difficulty quality. The cache will now give you two items with the possibility of a third. So they doubled the amount of loot you get from the Conflict Cache, and they have made it all of legendary quality. That's really good for Conflict players. In Conflict, they have also significantly boosted the XP gain um, aligned with uh, open living world activities. And also in Conflict, they have removed expertise and watch bonuses. So when you play Conflict PvP, it will be a fair game for everyone, whether you are a new player or a veteran. Now Dark Zone changes. It says the Rogue status. Going Rogue in the normal Dark Zone, that is the non-invaded Dark Zone. It says Going Rogue in the normal Dark Zone now has a 3 second activation timer. And this activation time is for invaded dark zones normally 0.75 seconds, but now it will be 3 seconds for those non-invaded. And it says for the first uh, rogue rank time duration, it has now been increased from 20 seconds to 30. Changes to status effects in PvP. It says that they have added diminishing returns for all status effects based on two categories, crowd control and damage over time, being ensnare, blind, bleed, burn, and poison. Now, what does diminishing returns mean? It says diminishing returns means that each subsequent application of the status effect of the same category will have a reduced duration until fuel, uh, full immunity 
is reached. Diminishing returns will not apply in PvE. This is for PvP only. Remember, we are in the PvP changes. Now, it says those changes will apply to the Plague of the Outcasts, so the Pestilence, and all of those status effects that I named. So all of those will now have diminishing returns in PvP. Immobilizing status effects. It says that they have reduced the severity of immobilizing status effects, being Riot Foam and Shock. Now Burn, it says while burning, rolling in any direction will now apply a bonus 10% damage resist resistance to that burn for 5 seconds. Maximum of 30. So you can roll 6 times and get rid of that burn. Eh, not get rid of it, but... Well, no, three times, my bad. So 10% for each, up to 30. Nice. So roll up to three times, and I bet that burn goes away. For bleeding, it says uh, not moving will grant 10% bleed resistance. That's pretty sick. So as soon as you get caught on a bleed, stay still. As soon as you get caught on a burn, combat roll. Pretty cool. For repair skill changes, all of your repair skills will now give you 50% hazard for 5 seconds whenever you use it. 50% hazard. That's pretty damn good. Booster Hive Changes. Remember, this is all for PvP. Booster Hive Changes. They have added poison to the list of effects that uh, the Booster Hive cleanses. The Booster Hive duration now scales with your skill tiers. They increase the maximum range of the booster hive by 50%, and they have increased the drone speed of that booster hive by 20%. The sticky EMP, they have reduced the EMP uh, explosion damage in PvP, and they have lowered the skill tier players that uh, will now not disrupt higher skill players within the same three skill tiers as the jammer pulse. All right. Talent changes. They have uh, updated descriptions for talents. Here we go. So Sadist, 20% after 4 kills, you bleed the enemy. Perfect Sadist, 25% after 3 kills, bleed the enemy. Same thing goes with Eyeless and Perfect Eyeless for Blind. Same thing goes for Ignited and Perfect Ignited for Burn. And now, the same thing applies... For Thunderstrike and Perfect Thunderstrike. Well done. Well done. That is a great change. So now Thunderstrike and Perfect Thunderstrike act the exact same way as all of the other status effects. Great. More changes here. So Future Perfection. It now will stack up to four times. So you can get four skill tiers from Future Perfection. For perfect preservation, it will now repair 15% armor and an additional 15% for headshots. Swift, that is the talent on the Stinger, will now give you weapon damage for 20 seconds. It used to be 15. And you can pause these and read them if you don't uh, want my quick overview. Now, as far as, uh, oh, we already read the perfect Thunderstrike. They showed that with these status effects. For Flatline, it will now be after four kills will apply a pulse. And Perfect Flatline will be three kills. So you can see the trend with all of these changes. They are making the normal version four kills, while the Perfect three kills. For Big Game Hunter, this is the Bighorn. They have changed it to where now you get 4% headshot damage per stack, up to 25 stacks. For the Breathe Free talent, this is for the Lady Death. They have now made it to where it is a max stack equal to your weapon's mag size. So if you increase your weapon's mag size, you can increase the amount of stacks you get for the Breathe Free talent. And remember, each of these stacks are 75% amplified damage. So that's going to be pretty huge. And then it says, finally, PvP only. The St. Elmo's engine will now only give you 50% shock ammo instead of 100%. Alright, moving on. Here are gear talent changes. Now it says uh, gear talent changes. Some of the descriptions will be changed by TU20.2. 
So some of the descriptions might not match in-game, but here are the patch notes for them. So for Intimidate and Perfect Intimidate, remember Perfect Intimidate is the hunter-killer chess piece. Uh, for Normal Intimidate, you will gain three stacks per second, max of nine. And for Perfect Intimidate, it will be max of 10, giving you 4% weapon damage. Obliterate will now give you 10 seconds of Obliterate instead of five. So they have doubled the time of Obliterate, which is amazing. And finally, for the festive fireworks show, this is for that uh, broken backpack. It says that the concussion grenades will become festive grenades. Hitting an enemy with a festive grenade will now cause explosions to happen around two enemies within 10 meters and deal 15% damage. All right, moving on to weapons. Now, these are all weapon changes for everyone, PvE, PvP. Now, it says right off the bat, weapon changes. The very first one, all exotic weapons. You can now change the third attribute by reconfiguring that exotic. Now, that will not take away your expertise on that exotic. However, it will reset all of your attributes and give you a random bottom third attribute. Next up, we have the Carbine 7 and the Stoner LAMG will now no longer drop with that preset talent. So you can get the Stoner and the Carbine 7 to drop with all of the talents in the game. For the Assault Rifles, here are your changes. 10% um, weapon damage buff to the ACR. 8% uh, weapon damage to the AKM. 10% to the AUG. 10% mag size to the CTAR and Rail Splitter. We'll have 50% RPM and 10 mag size. So let me just tell you the big ticket items because a lot of these really aren't going to matter, okay? Big ticket items. The capacitor is getting a 10% buff. The eagle bearer is getting a 50% RPM buff. The shield splinterer is getting a 50, per, or 50 RPM buff and 10 mag size. That's not percent. That's just plus 50 RPM. And uh, those are the big takeaways. The rest of these are meh at best. As far as the LMGs, the big ticket items that I want to show you for the LMGs, that would be the... Um, hmm. Everything across the board gets 20%, except for the blue screen and the iron lung. So I'm excited to see what the Bullet King's going to get. And remember, the Pestilence isn't going to get any changes either. So the Bullet King is the big winner here. And same with the Slepner. Slepner is going to be a big one too. I'm excited. As far as the SMGs, big takeaways for the SMGs. Um, the only one that really stands out for me, uh, besides the Slayer getting 10%, ayo, is going to be uh, the Banshee and the Grudge. Plus 50 RPM and plus 5% weapon damage is going to be big because that weapon already shoots very fast. So making it shoot faster and hit harder is good in my book. For rifles, the big ones that I would take away that come out tomorrow is the 20% weapon damage to the Harmony. That would be the biggest one, in my opinion, to look forward to. Going down to Marksman Rifles, big takeaway for the Marksman Rifle is the Model 700. The Model 700 is going to be the hardest hitting as soon as this comes out. It's going to be that and the Nemesis Sniper. So the Model 700 is getting a 25% weapon damage and 8 optimal range. So that's going to be a big ticket item. Okay. Now here are your gear, set cha or your gear changes to brand sets. Now this is the final version and this comes out tomorrow. So Alp Summit, big changes here. Skill duration, skill haste. China Light will get an increase to skill haste and status effects. Electric will get an increase to SMG damage. Uh, Hanayu will get an increase to weapon damage. Murakami will get an increase to repair skills and skill damage. While uh, Richter and Kaiser getting an increase to explosive resistance and repair skills. And finally, Wyvern getting status effects and skill duration. Um, big ticket items from that one, this first page. 
Um, the big ones that I want to try out. I'm excited to see what people are going to do with this 30% SMG right here for the electric. That's going to be pretty cool, especially in PvP, because you can use that with the uh, electric um, protection. That could be pretty cool. Uh, for this next one, 511, we're getting changes to health and hazard. Badger Tough is getting an increase to armor on kill. Uh, Bellstone Armory is getting an increase to incoming repairs. Uh, Brazos is getting a nice increase to mag size, while Heligard is getting an increase to health and armor region. Golan Gear is getting an increase to armor region and total armor. Habsburg Guard is getting an increase to marksman rifle damage and status effects, while Lingmo is getting an increase to skill health and LMG damage, and finally, Uzina is getting hazard protection increase. Big ticket items to take away here. Badger Tough getting more armor on kill. Yes, please. The magazine size with Brazos is really nice. Heligard and Golan Gear are going to be meta for armor region builds. The Marksman Rifle Habsburg Guard increase is going to be huge. Now moving on to the next one. This is our last one. Seska getting an increase to health of 90%. Douglas and Harding, stability and accuracy. Fenris, reload speed and stability. Grupo Sombra getting an increase to explosive damage. While Petrov is getting weapon handling and ammo capacity. Overlord is getting accuracy and weapon handling. And Walker Harris getting damage to health. Now big ticket uh, items I would say here. The Grupo explosive damage, that's a big one. And the Walker Harris damage to health is another big one there. That's going to be pretty nice. Now here are changes to your gear set items. System Corruption is getting a change. They increase to weapon damage. So that is actually getting doubled. Hunter's Fury is getting half health on kill, which is fine. Not a big player. Foundry Bulwark is getting an increase to their uh, damage you get back and the time in which you get it back. So that's going to be huge for Foundry Bulwark. Things that were not changed, Yaw Gear, Araldi, Providence, and Sokolov Concern. Leaderboards. In response to the balancing changes, a total of 273 leaderboards have been reset. Kinley College, Raids, Strongholds, Clans, Standard Solo, Standard Group, Invaded Solo, Invaded Group. 273 leaderboards have been reset. Improvements. Projects. Your Season Pass Daily Project will now give you more XP, uh, Optimization Material Cash, a new Bounty, Crafting Blueprint, another Cash and Shade Calibration Point. And they have added new missions to the uh, daily project. Your base of ops daily projects will now give you uh, more XP, more specialization points, more uh, gear, more blueprints, and an exotic component. Very nice. All of these caches are getting increased. These are all very good changes. Very good, very good. Now, as far as your global events, this is going to be another big one that's going to change the game. So for Guardians, this uh, global event, Guardians, when killing an angel, in addition to restoring armor to full, you will get 50% of your armor added as bonus armor. They have increased the damage buff from 30% to 50, and minions will now receive a 15% incoming damage um Instead of being coming invincible, I mean, that's a big change. And the damage buff duration is increased from 10 to 15 seconds. I mean, Guardians is going to be huge now. Polarity Switch, what they changed. They changed the damage, in, uh, damaging an enemy of a different color removing polarity stacks to killing an enemy of different color removes the polarity stacks. So if you accidentally shoot a different polarity, it doesn't matter. That is huge. They have changed the max stacks from 5 to 4. That's big. And they have changed the damage per stack from 20 to 25. Oh, okay, that evens it out. Nice. Q 
Killing an enemy of the right polarity will refill the weapon. Nice. Hollywood. They have tripled the explosive range and damage. And they have fixed the uh, VFX. That's huge. I love this. Huge. Shade exposed. They have 10 times the melee damage. Dude, that's sick. Uh, stacks are acquired 50% faster. And they have doubled the pulse rate uh, radius. And players will take 65% damage instead of 115%. Dude. All of these global events are going to be super fun now. Reanimated global event. They have tripled the explosive range and they have increased the explosive damage by 50%. An enemy headshot weakness is now increased by another 50%. This is huge. Damn, this is big. Commendation changes. Remember, they have added commendations to the game. So it says they have added new commendations for Paradise Lost. The first one being Incursion Effective Award, awarded for eliminating 10 hostiles during the incursion while you are under a status effect. Next, it's called Skillful Incursion, awarded for eliminating enemies with five different skills during the incursion. Then you have Incursion X, which is awarded for successfully securing the estate 10 times. So you have to beat the incursion 10 times. Next, we have Incursion Collector, added for incur uh, all Discovery Collectibles. Okay. And finally, Perfect Paradise Lost, awarded for completing the incursion with four team, team members without going down or using any medkits. That's going to be the new crazy patch to get. That's going to be a good one. I can't wait. All right, quality of life changes. Open world loot crates will now scale with world difficulty, so put all your world difficulties to heroic. And they have now added an option to display the item count to your stash. So whenever you look at your stash, you will see the item count. Next, we have the shade watch changes. They have capped the shade watch health bonuses to shade level 2000. So now if you are shade level 2000, you are max everything. Um, let's see here. Inventory changes. The recalibration station has now been reworked, receiving a streamlined flow, UI changes, and a new name called the Tinkering Station. This functionality of the Tinkering Station can be accessed um, while you go into your inventory. So again, you can just go into your inventory and now you can recalibrate, optimize, and expertise upgrade any of your items. I'll show you that tomorrow. Expertise, it says they have uh, received UI improvements with the Tinkering Station and they have uh, changed all of the expertise costs. So here are your new expertise costs. Not bad. It's very cheap now to uh, get your uh, expertise fully maxed out on your items, so I'll be doing that a lot more. Now it says here, uh, recalibration and optimization. They have merged both of them into tinkering. Players will now be able to optimize beyond the... Our players are now unable to optimize beyond their valued stored in the recalibration library. So make sure that you have your recalibration library maxed out. That way you can max out all of your items. Um, they have changed the armor kits. They have added the ability to instantly use an armor kit to replenish 25% of your armor every five seconds. So now we have instant armor kits. For skill mods, this is a big change. Skill mods. They have implemented a duplicate removal system. So when a superior skill mod is acquired, it will automatically replace the existing one resulting in the deconstruction of the inferior mod. This is only for skill mods. It says, uh, similarly, uh, if an inferior skill mod is obtained, it will automatically be de deconstructed. In both scenarios, uh, the deconstructed mod will give you printer filament. Okay. Game mode changes. Remember, they are changing descent. They are making it easier 
So it says uh, they have lowered the required heat necessary to reach Nemesis. This will reduce the minimum loop to reach the Nemesis being loop 4 and the maximum loop to reach the Nemesis being loop 9. They have also decreased the reward requirements in Descent by 1 to 5 loops. So players will now receive more loop caches rewards for completing the same number of loops. They have added the exotic named and reconstructed caches within the NSA tech store. Nice. I can't wait to see that one. The reconstructed cache. I want to get all of the blueprints tomorrow. And they have also added four new uh, outfits, descent outfits. It's the same outfit, just four different colors. Also, they have now added a talent pool rotation to descent that will update every three days. These pools will have different uh, talents and different exotic talents every three days. Also, uh, other fixes. They have fixed the issue with the Summit level 100 XP, so we'll test that out. And they have also fixed some stability issues with uh, Countdown, Descent, and Summit. Um, we are getting towards the bottom. Fixes, bug fixes. Weapon and gear caches in open world and missions would not scale to the uh, global difficulty setting. They now will. The skill mods of a higher level than the player will no longer be equipped. The scope mod from the Oak Herald is now fixed. They have fixed an issue with blueprints for your named sidearms uh, going into the reconstructed cache. They have also fixed the issue. The majority of the named gear piece blueprints coming from reconstructed caches did not require brand-specific materials. The gift name backpack was in the vest section, so they fixed that. The blueprints for the Big Show and Fox's Prayer could be found in the crafting station, so they fixed that. They also fixed an issue that allowed keeping the increased mag size from the True Patriot, so no one can now hot swap True Patriot. That is fixed. And finally, they have fixed an issue that allowed glitching through a ladder when entering cover. Going down to exploits, they have fixed the corner glitch, and they have fixed an exploit where players could be invited at the end of the raid to receive a raid-specific key without any participation. Apparel events. We do have new apparel events. When the event is active, you can now earn apparel event keys by leveling up your watch and unlocking the different items through caches. Apparel event keys for the apparel caches can be earned from the following sources. One key will be granted for all players. One key will be granted for every four shade levels. You can direct purchase them with premium credits. And if you are a season pass holder, you will get an additional three keys. Now, here is our first apparel event. It is called Veiled Tactics. So Veiled Tactics Apparel Event offers a collection of four new outfits to acquire with additional fifth outfit once you complete it. The event will revolve around the theme of camouflage and catering to those agents who appreciate the art of concealing oneself. And here's an image for the Veiled Tactics. And then finally, we have the Last Resort. The Last Resort Apparel Event will return from Year 2 Season 3, and this will offer agents an opportunity to gather these outfits that were uh, previously uh, released. And those were uh, that was back when the Cleaners came back uh, to the Division 2. Now, Season Pass, the optional Season Pass is available for 1,000 premium credits. That is $9.99 for Americans. The in-game in-store granting additional access to the Minpo outfit. You can see right here, this is the Minpo outfit. Looks sick, dude. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it says here uh, it will be available for Warlords of New York owners and Ubisoft Plus subscribers. In addition to the Season Pass, the Premium Reward Track will give you nine weapon skins, 
10 gear dies, two new emotes, two vanity outfits, and a face mask. Oh, and here's the last blurb. In addition, new unique cosmetic bundles will be regularly added to the store. This time, players will get the looks of Keener's Squad. So each of these bundles will be available, one for Dragoff, one for Conley, one for Kajika, one for Parnell, and one for Aaron Keener himself. That's huge. That's huge. I can't wait for the Aaron Keener bundle. Let's go. Let's go. And those were all of your patch notes for tomorrow's major update, Year 5 Season 3 Vanguard. Remember, this comes out tomorrow at 0630 Eastern. Now, I am Kamikaze Von Doom. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, while you're at it, hit that thumbs up. Support the channel by subscribing. You know the whole YouTube spiel. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care of, your, of yourself, and uh, yeah, peace out.